Uh, how about that old uh, Orange uh, International there? Come on, go ahead. Well, it looks like you're going the same way I'm going here out there to uh, Notre Dame du Nord for that uh, infamous truck rodeo. Yes, sir. That's where we're going. All right. Tell me about the truck that you're running there and uh, what you do with it uh, when you're not uh, going to truck rodeos. It's a 2002 International 60 Series Detroit, 18-speed. Uh, I hold lumber Monday to Friday. Heavy loads, four and five axles. Ten four. Did you see what you got for horsepower there? It's rated uh, 470, but it's uh, doing a lot better. It's five and change. Sounds pretty throaty there. I heard you get on the Jake brake a little bit uh, ago. Yeah, the muffler went. I couldn't afford to put a muffler on, so it's just straight pipes. Well, what's your name there, and uh, what do you go by on the radio? My name is Kurt, and uh, years ago I used to run Texas, and I looked like a little Mexican fella, so everybody called me wetback. Yeah, <laughs> that's in for. So you're hauling lumber Monday through Friday. Where are you normally going with the loads that you carry? Home Depot. We haul uh, pressure treated lumber to Home Depot at night. Uh, 10 p.m. delivery and then a 1 or 2 a.m. delivery after that. It's all four and five axle loads. Our lightest loads are like uh, we're grossing 105,000 pounds, but we load green lumber coming down to the pressure treater and we're up around 130. 130,000 pounds coming down. Where's point A to point B? Where do you pick up and where are some of the places that you deliver? We load just outside of Newmarket, Ontario. It's just a little town. And we deliver, I want to say maybe 120 miles to the north. And then the rest is maybe within a 30 mile circle. Alright, 10-4. So just so people can get an idea of where that is on the map, what's the closest uh, major city to Newmarket? Toronto. Toronto, Ontario. New market would be uh, 55 kilometers, which is 30, 36 miles north. 10 to 4. Well, we're on this grade here going down. How about you hit them jakes if you got them there? Well, how long have you been trucking for there, Kurt? 32 years. Where was it when you started trucking? Just down in Toronto. Um, when I was a kid in school, a guy, he was good friends with my dad, he's still good friends with my dad. He uh, needed help in the summertime unloading french fries in a trailer, referring to like a frozen trailer. So I did that for two summers, and then I got stupid and quit school at 16. And uh, I did it full time, and at 18 I got my license. Have you always uh, been pulling lumber, or what else have you done there? I'm not going to lie, and you've heard this before, but I've been there and done that. The only thing I've never owned is a tanker. I drove tow truck, heavy tow truck for 15 years, and I towed tractors with tankers, but I've never actually driven a truck with a tanker. 10-4. So out of all the different equipment types that you've uh, pulled, what's your favorite? I've done uh, quite a few of those. Those are always fun. Lots of thinking. Ten four. Yeah, I agree with that. Though those type of loads are always fun. Uh, keeps you on your toes uh, every step of the way. That's for driving. When I was towing, I did 15 years of heavy towing, and uh, that's one time you show up. You know, you're going to a tractor trailer accident. You're thinking like, what am I up against when I get there? You know, is it completely upside down? Is it just on its side? Is it just a little bit stuck and over exaggerating? Or or like what is it, with the police down here, like the OPP, which is our provincial police, they uh, they want the highway cleaned up as fast as possible. They can take four hours to do an investigation, but you've got 40 minutes to clean the highway up. I'm sure there's a lot of towmen right now, 
shaking their head, agreeing with you. Since you have that experience, when you were on the ground doing the work, you know, in the recovery, what was that situation like for you? Scary. You know, uh, I've been hit twice, both times just in my hand. And it, I mean, it hurt my gloves, it didn't hurt my hand, but I knew I got hit. And uh, I've, I've trained a lot of tow guys, and I tell them, don't keep your back to the road. Face the road. Because if you see something coming, you can react. If you can't see it coming, you're done. And uh, I get out and walk down the side of my truck, and I'm looking for escape routes right as I'm doing it. You know, I'm a little guy, I can dive under my tow truck, it's no big deal. When you're hooking up, I come out from between the truck and trailer on the passenger side. And at the bottom, like when you're underneath holding the drive shaft, I'm always laying lengthwise. That if the truck gets hit from the back, which happens, it's going to roll forward over me, not if I'm sideways, it's going to run over my legs. It's almost kind of sad to have to think that way, that as soon as you get out of the truck, you have to protect your life, and you have to be thinking about what to do next in the event of someone else not paying attention, not to point any fingers, but everybody likes to look at an accident for whatever reason and they're curious about it but before you know it you look to the left or look to the right your hands moving to the left to the right on that steering wheel and your car is off track you know before you know it yeah yeah i was in uh pennsylvania one day picking up a tractor and trailer coming back to canada and uh some truck driver in the left lane wouldn't let the right the guy in the right lane move over but this guy was doing everything the guy in the right lane he could to get stopped that is, he was blasting his horn, and I, I could see what was happening, so I just tucked in between the truck and trailer, and, or between the tow truck and truck, got out of the way, and as he's going by, the guy's apologizing, like, with his hands. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but he's, you can see the hand signal, he's saying he's sorry. That's, that's uh, definitely not good. Well, we got this red light here coming up, and uh, we got somebody there behind you. Maybe we can get a peek at who that is and get hear him on the radio here sure the, the viewers are going to be like, well, what about that Pete? What about that Pete? So uh, I'll leave you a gap here, Mr. Pete. Maybe you can come up here uh, ahead of Kurt and talk to you for a little bit, if he heard me. He might not have. Hey, wait! He's going to be mad. He missed his uh, golden ticket, his 15 minutes of fame, or whatever you want to call it here. <laughs> well, this will be the first interview with uh, International, and there's guys that run Internationals. I see pictures of those on Facebook. So hopefully they'll be excited to see uh, see your truck there. A lot of people, they want to know about uh, how the truck's doing, uh, fuel economy and things like that. So uh, how do you think how do, th how do you think the truck's doing uh, fuel economy-wise there? I was a cat guy. Uh, my dog's name is Cat. I've got cat socks, cat shirts, cat underwear, cat sweaters, cat hats. This was my first Detroit. And my cats, if I worked hard, I got six miles per gallon. This thing without working hard, and I mean, I don't, I don't baby it. I'm averaging eight miles per gallon, and that's hauling heavy. Well, you're doing good there. Hopefully, your pocketbook's doing pretty good too with that savings. It's doing all right. I can afford to feed you today. Um, it worked out to the first week I had this truck. I saved 200 bucks a week in fuel. It's gotten considerably better. I've got uh, an ECM tuning done in here. I got uh, diesel spec in Montreal, go back Canada there, they put a, a tune in it for me and it's a thousand percent better, not a hundred, it's a thousand percent better. You said uh, diesel spec put a tune in the ECM, so for those guys that don't know what that is just yet, uh, give us the layman's terms of what that means. All these new fangled trucks have computers and uh, from the factory it's tuned the way the factory wants it to run. But which will work probably for the application the truck was built for. But of course, this truck was built to run maximum about 65,000 pounds gross. And uh, I know the people it came from, and nice people, but it's not good enough for me, so Diesel Spec has a program, whatever you want. I've only got a 575 program in here. That's 575 horsepower at the crank, 510 to the wheels, which I don't know exactly how it works, but I know my fuel mileage went up, my turbo boost went up, my exhaust gas temperature, which is the turbo temperature, went down, and it pulls no problem. Fuel mileage went up, like I said. That's very good. Very good savings. I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to want to check out diesel spec. Uh, they are, I think they're already popular enough there. 
but uh, there's nothing wrong with giving them a plug with uh, with what they do and how they're helping the driver save some money. Uh, it's a great system. Uh, I'm not plugging them for any other reason than it works. So custom parts, what do you got for custom parts there or uh, what do you got planned for the truck in the future? The bumper was bent when I bought it and the factory replacement was $1,500. I put that custom 20 inch blind mount on for $950. You know, I can't understand why I went to a chrome shop and saved 600 bucks, but okay. The visor I put on, I wanted a visor with no lights, but my chrome guy was five weeks getting it to me and I said, no, let me get something else. So he gave me the one with the 10 lights in it, but clear lenses, so it kind of looks like there's no lights. Uh, I put rims and tires on, to drive tires and drive rims. We tried to polish the rims, they couldn't come up, so instead of paying a guy to sand them and polish and polish, I just bought new ones. And like I said, the muffler had a problem and <laughs> it had to fall off. That's all I've done. I'm going to put a six inch extension to my shifter. My Kenworth that you videotaped last year pulling into the rodeo, it had an 18 inch extension, but uh, I sold that truck. Now I'm stuck with, I mean, I've got this one. Well, uh, we're pulling into Notre Dame du Nord. What do you expect for the weekend? Oh, I'm out for the show and shine. I don't. You know, if I have to sign up for it, I'll sign up for it, just to park with, the, with my buddies, but I'm not here to win prizes, I'm here to visit friends and, you know, family, a bunch of my friends race, a bunch of my friends from Facebook are up here to visit, like to look at the show and they'll come see me, and I got, uh, inside my trailer I got a barbecue, two picnic tables, six air mattresses, two couches, and I got friends and family coming to sleep over tonight, I, ca I call them my camper, it's a... A 95 spot actual reefer that the reefer's out of. 10 4. Well, that sounds like a fun time. I'll throw this at you. Do you want to take the opportunity to go down the hill and find a place to turn around and go back up the hill? I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, why not? You know, it'll be the only rolling interview going up that hill. Oh, we have to do it then. It'll get you some bragging rights. I'm not doing a big smoky cold burnout. I'm telling you that now. <laughs> I don't know what the clutch is like. <laughs> 10 4. down this hill, Kurt, what are some of the memories that you've had uh, coming to this show that you can kind of explain to some of the, uh, the viewers of this video so maybe they'd want to come up here next year? Uh, the very first time I watched the racing up the hill, I thought there's no flipping way the trucks are going that fast up the hill. Until I stood here and watched it and it's unbelievable. I've got a friend that racing here, Steve Carano. And uh, he, he does 110 kilometers an hour at the top of the hill, which is pretty near 70 miles an hour. It's only 660 feet. It's an eighth of a mile. That's pretty intense. How many years have you been coming to the rodeo? I believe this is number five. I took 2013 off. It's not expensive by any means, but it's 500 kilometers, which is uh, six, five, 300 miles up here. While we're passing these trucks here, why not just go ahead and give us the lay of the land of uh, what we see on the camera here as you cruise by? They've changed things around the last year. This is the pits now. This is where uh, the race trucks hang out. These are all the race trucks on our left. They used to be, everybody used to be in by the school. Now it seems they're outside.
Well, Kurt, we got a good weekend of uh, racing ahead of us, and uh, it was good to talk to you on the radio here and get a get a little insight on uh, the corn binder there you got, and of course uh, what you shared about your tow experience. Uh, that's priceless. So I appreciate that. No, no, thank you. You do a great job. We love watching your videos. It's uh. Well, I try to keep them coming as quick as I can, but uh, you guys have a good weekend there, right? You too, mister. I'll see you for dinner. Steak and beer sounds great. We'll see you. Okay, you bring the beer.